present and future. Just like the future's trying, that the weight of history push to the present. What would our world be like without triangles? So, Professor Martial, what exactly is a triangle? Well, you see, Sister Finnegan, a triangle is a three and shape with three vertices and three angles that always adds up to 180 degrees. See here, Sister Finnegan, this is an equilateral triangle. Each angle is 60 degrees and there are three. So 60, 120, 180. 180! That is always what it'll be. Sure about that? Because it's 180 with this triangle. But is it 180 with this triangle? And what's that angle there? Well, that's 45 degrees. 45 plus 45 equals 90 degrees. What's that one? Well, that's 90 degrees on a right angle. So 90 plus 90 equals 180. Okay. If that's a right angle, then this must be a right angle triangle. Exactly. Some other triangles are the isosceles triangle. It has two equal sides and one that isn't. Another triangle is the scalene triangle. Each angle and sides are different. Triangles are all around us. The wings on planes and space shuttles are shaped like triangles. So, if there were no triangles, we couldn't go to space or fly to Paris and see the Eiffel Tower. Exactly! You wouldn't be able to see the Eiffel Tower because its whole infrastructure is made of triangles. In fact, we've used triangles for thousands of years. Like the pyramids of ancient Egypt? Yes, the pyramids were built by ancient Egyptians over 4,500 years ago and each side of the pyramids are triangles. So I've heard about this thing called a pentad. It's from a long time ago. Wait. What's a pentad? Well, you see, the pentad is a five-pointed star used by ancient Greek philosophers. It's an infinite shape. So a pentad is a fractal, just like the Sapinski triangle. Oh, um, what, what is a fractal? A fractal is a shape you can zoom in or enlarge and it will always be the same shape. Okay, but um, what do you say about the Sapinski triangle? Do you mean Sapinski triangle? Probably, yeah. Yeah, the Sapinski Triangle is also a fractal. It has been used to research astronomy and also the weather. What happens when we can no longer live on this Earth? Will triangles save us? Yes, they will, because they are the strongest shape and they have been used in many buildings and bridges. If I'm building a building out of triangles, won't I need to know how much space a triangle takes up? Exactly. You have to know the area of the shape. Yeah, that's it. To find the area of any triangle, you use this simple formula. Half the base times the height. In this right angle triangle, uh, the base is 20 centimetres and the height is 20 centimetres. For this sum to work, you have to do 10 centimetres times 20 centimetres. The answer is 200 centimetres square. Okay. The, this one over here is an equilateral triangle. 20 centimetres, 20 centimetres and 20 centimetres. So it must be 10 centimetres times 20 centimetres. No, you're wrong. Because for this, you have to do the height not the length. So the height is 17 centimetres, not 20. So you do 10 times 17 centimetres, so it's 170 centimetres squared. Okay, now I know how to work out the area of a triangle. A triangle is going to be used in colonising the moon and Mars. Yes, certainly. They are going to be used as buildings on the moon. Well, Assistant Finnegan, you have learnt a lot about triangles today. Yes! But I am now off to the future with my triangles.